So this is where the series gets real world. We're now ready to calculate the value at risk for n positions or any number of positions. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Let's get straight into this and take a look at the calculation of the value at risk and portfolio standard deviation of returns for three or more positions. But again, why are we doing this? Well, we're doing it in order to smooth out our equity curve, reduce drawdowns and reduce the overall risk on the account. And looking at two formulas that we've used in previous episodes, the first of those for a value at risk for a single position, and then the value at risk for a portfolio of positions. The main difference between these two, as we've said, is the calculation of the standard deviation of the portfolio. And if you remember for just two positions, this is the formula that we used. And again, I won't go into this in any detail here because I've covered it in previous episodes. And you can access those previous episodes by clicking on the playlist link in the description below the video. So I'm going to move straight on to the same calculation, but now for three positions. And this is how that looks. Now, on first sight, this looks very complicated but it very much follows the pattern that we had previously for just two positions. And if we go through this step by step, we'll see how that's the case. So along the top here, we have three terms, which are pretty much identical to the first two terms in the previous formula. So we have one of these for each of the positions, and that would remain the case regardless of how many positions we had. If we had 100 positions, we would have 100 terms like this, which was the weight of each position squared multiplied by the standard deviation of that position squared. And it's as simple as that. However, it starts to get maybe a little bit more complex when we start to look at the other terms. So here again, we have three terms, but this does not relate to the number of positions. That's just a coincidence when we're looking at three positions. In actual fact, these terms relate to the number of correlation coefficients there are between all of the combinations of positions we're holding. And it just so happens that with three positions, there are also three of these values. And you can see how these correlation coefficients fit in to each of the terms that we see. But again, in terms of the principles behind these, this is identical to the two position formula. So this difference between the number of positions and the number of correlation coefficients between them becomes clearer when we look at an example for four positions. So because we need to measure the correlation between each and every combination of positions, as you can see here, for four positions, we have six correlation coefficients. And so in the formula that we've just seen, in this case, we would have six terms, as you can see here, each one representing the relationships between each of the positions we're holding. Now, if you're interested, the number of terms generally that you will need in relation to positions is given by n into n minus one over two, where n is the number of positions you're holding. So if we just plug the value of four, which we're using here for four positions into this, 
it's 4 multiplied by 3, which of course is 12, divided by 2 is 6, and we have the 6 terms that you see. However, if this was for 5 positions, it would be 20 over 2, which would be 10. So there'd be 10 correlation coefficients that would have to be calculated. Now, in terms of doing these calculations in Excel, it gets progressively more difficult the more positions you have. With code, on the other hand, the complexity doesn't increase as long as we set up our calculation loops correctly. So in the next episode, when I look at Excel, I'm going to limit this to just three positions or three assets. But then in the following episode, when I code this in MQL5, I'll do it in a way that can be used for any number of positions. So if you wanted to calculate it for 100 positions, that would be possible with the code that I will produce. So thank you for your time again. Join me next time for that Excel illustration. In the meantime, if you want to find out more about what DarwinX does and the kind of services that we provide, you can click on the link that's bottom right on the screen right now. But until next time, trade safe.